I recently built a package for Ubuntu and I did it in the Debian environment. So I used Debian 11 to take the source code you see on the left and package it up into a .deb file that I was able to use in Debian 11 and Ubuntu 22.10. This is the command line that I used to accomplish the packaging debbuild-uc-us and I find it to be a very simple way to do that. What I'm going to do here is walk through very quickly um, the different files we we have when we're building a Debian slash Ubuntu package. So this is a control file and it basically describes the file. So what I'm showing here is a Red Hat Fedora spec file for building a package in Red Hat or Fedora, right? And what I'm showing here is how similar these files are. The concepts are very similar. It's as if they had a common ancestor. I wonder who that could be. But the standards version and the bills depend lines are very important in this file they determine the level of functionality you have in building the package and how the package will be validated. This rules file is basically the instruction to the build system, to the Debian build system, on how to build the file. And you'll notice how, how uh, succinct this file is. Line 2 I put in an override so that I can inject the C++ version that I'm using um, that I want to use on the command line or that I want the Debian system to use. I added a line here for pthreads because when I was in Debian I noticed that it required uh, pthreads to successfully link my software versus what I needed in Fedora. I also had to downgrade from AutoTools 2.71 to AutoTools 2.69 that's not a problem. There's not a huge gulf between those. There's not a huge gap between those. And so I was fine with making that, that small modification. I also tweaked these lines here in the make file so that icons go to the proper menu entries in Debian and Ubuntu. And this is the equivalent command line to build a package for Red Hat and Fedora, it's pretty extensive. Whereas um, when we look at building a Debian package, the command line is much simpler. So, with that said, you know, there are a number of things that I see as similar. You got control, rules, install, compat, and changelog files for building a Debian package. And this dev build line is going to use those files to build the package, right? So, the thing is, is that you have many different ways to build a package in the Ubuntu Debian world, right? And the, the Debian manual on their website that you can also download as a PDF tells you that there are several different ways. I think I counted maybe five, and there may have been more than that. But the way I chose is what you would consider the middle way. It's the middle way between very intricate and in-depth versus something real simple through a package they call Equivs, E-Q-U-I-V-S. So I'm in the Debian 11 environment in a virtual machine, and I'm going to clone the source code from the GitHub repository. So this is a very quick and convenient way to get the code into this environment. I don't have to secure copy SCP a zip file or anything like that. This this works just as well. And so once I have this cloned, I can then work with this this source base any way that I need. The overall plan is to take the contents of this source directory and paste it into another directory, right? 
in this other directory, that this this target directory is going to be used to put together a compressed archive. In order to build a Debian package, you have to have a compressed archive. Same as you do for building an RPM package in Fedora and Red Hat. So in all these build environments, you have to have a compressed archive. And in the case of Debian and Ubuntu, the name of the compressed archive matters a great deal. It matters a great deal. And so I start with a file folder here, right? And this file folder is named Gaucher RSS 8.0.0. And so when I go into a new tab off of that folder, it's empty. And I'm going to paste in or copy in the contents from the cloned source tree, right? I'm going to copy that into that folder. And then once it's in that folder, I can then make a compressed archive off of that folder. Now you might ask, why don't I make a compressed archive off of the cloned folder from GitHub? Well, the answer to that is when the compressed archive is extracted, the folder that it generates needs to have a certain name. And so I haven't seen that written anywhere, but in all of my uh, troubleshooting and, and uh, tests, I found that that to be true. So by naming your compressed archive folder, a certain way and then generating your compressed archive off of that folder you improve the chances of a successful build so that's why I do it this way and so in the case of Debian they want you to put an underscore between the name of the package and the version and they want the words original abbreviated before the file extension for the compressed archive so there's the compressed archive it is created and I am not going to do anything else with it. It just needs to be right there in the home directory. So the next step is to actually go into that same folder that we used for the compressed archive. All right. So we're going to change directory into that folder and then from there run dead build space dash UC dash us right so here I listed out the contents it matches the, the same as the source tree cloned in from github so now that we're in here we issue our build command we run it and what it's going to do is it's going to run configure right from auto tools right auto tools was used to develop the configure script that is used in this process and then following that the build is going to reference the rules file in order to generate the in order to run the make file right so that's what happened here is the make file is running and it's going through the the normal build process for the C++ source code, right? One other addition is the install file. Now the install file helps determine where the executables and other pieces will go when the program is being installed. Hence the name, I would suppose. But here we have a successful result in building the Debian package. So everything is looking good. A uh, lynchian was ran. And no project is complete without a few warnings here or there. Um, but so we have the package right here. Um, let's see. Let's let's click on it. You you can see, yeah, so you can see it there. So that's the deb file. That's the file that I'm going to copy back into the main environment, the Fedora environment, and then I'm going to use SSH through secure copy. I'm going to then copy that Debian file 
into an Ubuntu virtual machine instance. So that's the next step after this because we want to test this and make sure it works. But we've accomplished a lot here in running the, the build script and as you can see I have the, the C++ version. That does not happen automatically. That does not happen automatically. So even though you've written your software code for C++ 17 or C++ 20 or C++ whatever it's going to be, right? Whatever the defaults in the build environment is set to is what the build environment is going to use. And in Debian 11, the default is not C++ 17, right? So here in Ubuntu, uh, this is the Ubuntu uh, environment in a virtual machine. And I must say, I like the layout of Ubuntu. I like the colors that was chosen. I like the way the icons uh, are done. I like the strip on the side, right? It's the same as Debian. I mean, it's the same GNOME, but the way that Canonical has styled the GNOME environment, I think, is first class. It's, it's first class styling, right? So, I'm going to find a command line. Let's, let's get a terminal. And as you can see, I have these virtual machines open. If you caught a quick glimpse of the system monitor, um, you definitely see why developers need 32 and sometimes 64 gigabytes of RAM. Because when you're doing this type of development and you have these many machines running at the same time, you need all the memory you can get. So, this is uh, my terminal, and I'm going to use Secure Copy, abbreviated SCP. There's a program called SCP, and it's going to allow me to get the file from the virtual machine onto my main environment, the host environment, and then I can also use Secure Copy to push that same file to a different virtual machine from the host environment to another host machine. So I use the details window here in Virtual Machine Manager to get the IP address of the, of the virtual environment where the Debian file is uh, in the Debian 11 environment. So that way I can just go copy and paste that into the terminal and use that as appropriate. Secure copy, like nearly all commands in the Linux environment, is very, very specific, very um, precise in how you must form formulate it. Um, I have the file window over on the right so that we can see the Debian file when it drops, right? So here you can run the man page for SCP if you need to familiarize yourself with how it runs. I'm going to do scp-p and I like using dash p because I like the timestamps to remain consistent across all environments, right? If you don't use dash p, then the file will copy successfully. That's not a problem. It simply will have a new timestamp, right? The timestamp um, will reflect when you copied it rather than when it was created. So I want the original creation timestamp on the file. So that's why I use dash p. A lot of people like to use um, dash r as well. Um, I'm not that bold, right? You use dash r um, on purpose, right? When you need to recursively um, download or upload files, right? And I am interested in one particular file but because I'm using file globbing and wildcards, then I want to make sure that I, I don't use dash R, right? So um, I basically I specified my command line away where it's somewhat convenient. And I got one extra file, which is fine. It's the debug file, um, debug symbols for software developers who are working with packages. And so that's fine. Um, now let's push that file to the Ubuntu environment, right? So I don't have anything in the Ubuntu environment yet, but I definitely need the IP address so I can know where to send the file to over the network. 
and clicking that refresh button next to the IP address was totally unnecessary. I just like pressing the refresh button. But anyway, who doesn't like pressing the refresh button? You always want the latest of everything, even when there's no, no latest to actually obtain. So, and I like to flip it back to the, the uh, console view just because, you know, I just want to make sure I can see the console view at any given moment. So, here we're going to do SCP in reverse rather than um, going uh, from a remote to a local destination. We're going to go from a local destination to a remote destination. And here we can use tab completion to fill out the file name so we can uh, make sure to only copy one file this time, right? So that, that's great. And we're going to copy it into the home directory of the specified user um, in the, on the remote on the remote environment, in the in this case the virtual environment containing the Ubuntu 22.10 uh, operating system. So once we are there, we see that the file is in place. This is the file that we will use to install the, the C++ program in Ubuntu. And so it's pretty simple. We're just going to use apt and we're going to do sudo apt and then reference to the home directory and then the file name and that will get us where we need to be so let's see if we can accomplish that so uh, you got to make sure you spell install correctly right so there it is um, sudo apt install then the um, actual Debian file now I could have just double clicked on the file over in the uh, file window and it would have just opened up the ins the uh, software install center and allowed me to install the program that way so we can do this in an entirely visual way if we wanted to um, but for those that are building packages it's useful to know how to do it in the command line right so let's see if we can find the program icon and there it is and that's going to bring us towards the end of this vi of this video, which is 17 minutes, but it took me approximately 20 to almost 30 hours to actually um, put all of this together. So you're getting the cliff notes today. Um, there may be another video after this that goes into a little bit more in depth where I reveal um, all the intricacies of what I went through.